Hey everybody, Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this igloo scene inside of Blender. Now, I already made part one for this tutorial a while back, and I showed you how to make the basic model for this igloo and how to add the light in the center. So in this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to create the snow material, this moon in the background with the blue sky, night sky, as well as this fake snow, and how to composite it and bring it all together. So, if you haven't watched the first part of the tutorial, I'll put a link in the description below so you can watch that and create this igloo model. And let's get started. First thing we want to do is create the night sky. So, we're going to head over to the third layer here, add in a UV sphere, press Ctrl 2 to add in a subsurf modifier. We're going to set the shading to smooth. Now I'm just going to scale this down and put it in the upper left hand corner so it'll be our moon. And we can open up a new window now so that we can create the material. And I'm going to name this material Moon. And I'm just going to position this so we can see it. And press Shift Z to go into rendered view. We're going to delete this diffuse shader here because we're going to be using an emission shader. And to create the texture, we're going to be using multiple noise textures. So press Shift A, add in your noise texture. And if you have the Node Wrangler add on enabled, you can press Ctrl T and it'll automatically add this texture coordinate node as well as a mapping node. So let's just switch this to the object uh, vector instead. And I'm going to increase this scale to 100, set this detail to 5, add in a new color ramp node, plug this in, and press Ctrl Shift and left click so we can view it. And for this, we just want to create some specs which we can add later on to our scene onto our moon texture just some faint specs like that I think that's good so let's duplicate both of these move them down plug this in here set this to 15 I'm gonna move this white all the way back and I'm just gonna keep this black slider right about there Let's duplicate this again. This time we're going to set the size to 5. And I'm going to decrease this black slider to about there. And I'm going to increase the white slider a bit. Like that. Let's duplicate this another time. Take this output, plug it in. I'm going to set this one to 1. And let's duplicate that. And this one will be set to 0.5. We want to decrease the detail for these last two to about 2. Okay, let's set this white slider to the end for this 0.5 one. And instead of black, we just want it to be a darker gray so it's a little bit brighter. Let's pull that in like that. Doesn't look too bad. Let's take a look at this one. We want to make this a brighter gray so it's not as dark just drag in both of these somewhere about there I think is pretty good maybe make it a little bit brighter and now let's just add a mix RGB node plug in both of those set the factor to 1 and let's multiply it and then let's duplicate this and plug it in again with the next texture and that's starting to look like our moon texture already. Let's possibly add some more black like that. And I'm going to duplicate this multiply node, but this time we're going to set it to add so that we can add in those gray specs. And right now there's obviously way too many, so to get rid of that we're going to mask out a few of those. So let's add a bright contrast node and plug it into this texture that has a scale of 5. We're going to increase this contrast to about 5. Let's decrease that brightness, negative 1. Let's duplicate the multiply node and plug this in. And you can see we're getting a lot less of those gray specs. So now when we add it in, you see that there's very few. I might want to increase a bit of those like that and I think that looks pretty good so now all we have to do is add in that last 
spec so let's duplicate this add node and just plug that into the bottom right here and it's barely noticeable if you do see you can see just some very few white specks so let's maybe decrease this size to 75 just so that they're a little bit bigger okay I think that's looking good so let's plug that into the emission shader and view that and I think I'm going to increase the strength to 2.5 so we get a bit brighter moon and I think that's looking pretty good so now we can add in our stars and to do that we're going to press shift A add a cube let's go to top view and let's go to our first layer where our camera is and I'm going to press M and press shift and click on the first three layers so that our camera will be visible on all of these layers and now I'm just going to position our cube so it's right in front of our camera like that move it up a bit I'm also going to rotate it so it matches the rotation and on this fourth layer we're going to add a icosphere and give it a new material name it star we're going to switch that diffuse shader with another emission shader let's add in a color ramp and we're going to set this to constant we'll add a few two more maybe just space these out evenly because we want to get some random star colors so let's just brighten that up a bit and I think those are a bit too dark because we want majority of them to be very light so you can actually see the stars so let's play around with that some more I think that's probably good okay so now I'm going to add in a input object info node and we'll plug in this random output here so now if we go into rendered view and see if we duplicate this icosphere it's randomly picking one of these colors for our icosphere to be so I'm just going to delete all of those let's go back to our third layer here select our cube give it a new particle system set the end frame to 1 set the number to 5000 and we're going to have it emit from the volume so it's actually emitting inside of this cube let's check object here type in icosphere set the random size to 1 and the size to 0 0.02 still too big 0 0.002 and that's really small you can't see it that's because we have emitter check so just uncheck that I think that's too big so 0 0.001 maybe yeah and I think that's looking pretty good for our stars so now what we want to do is create a nebula in the back so I'm just going to change our background color to black for now and we're going to add in a UV sphere press ctrl 2 to make it uh, add a subsurf modifier and set the shading to smooth I'm just going to scale this up so everything's inside of it and let's go to front view and render view give it a new material name it nebula and we're going to delete this diffuse shader we're going to add another emission shader again. We're going to add in a mix shader and a transparent shader. Now let's just view that. So you can see it's partially emitting light and it's partially transparent. We're going to use a noise texture to affect where it's going to emit light. So let's add that noise texture in right now. Press Ctrl T. I'm going to change it to object instead of generated. Let's add in a color ramp. And let's check that out I want it to scale along this x-axis I want it to be longer so let's play around with that maybe set it to 0.1 and decrease this size to 2 maybe and let's increase this contrast I'm actually going to set it to B spline like that maybe drag in this white a little bit Okay, and we'll plug this into our factor and let's make this a nice blue color first. Let's view that. And that's the opposite of what we want, so let's flip these two shaders. That's looking really nice. 
I just want to increase that contrast some more. Maybe let's set it back to linear or ease. Let's view this. Okay, that's not what I really want. Maybe that would look a little bit better. Whoops. Let's view that. Okay, let's make this probably a lighter gray color so it's not as strong. And in camera view, we need to rotate this by the Z axis. I think that looks about good. Still need to play around with these settings. Let's just switch it to B spline again. And let's make this white. Drag that in. And let's make this more of a blue color. Let's make it brighter. Okay, and I think that's a pretty good blue. Let's look at this noise texture a little bit more. I want to maybe change it to 0 0.5, nope, 0 0.05. See how that looks. Doesn't look too bad. Let's add some distortion, 0 0.1 maybe. You just have to play around with these settings. It's really up to your own preference. Nope, that doesn't look too good. Nope. Maybe we can use the Z and scale that up. I don't like that too much. Let's look at this and add a mix RGB node. Instead, let's multiply them at a factor of 1, or 0.75. Let's duplicate this and switch it to add. And let's just make this some crazy number so it'll be a lot brighter. Just duplicate it again, like that. Let's press clamp so that it's actually just set to 1 as the maximum. And let's see how that looks compared to this. Not a big difference. So let's just get rid of those. I think that looks pretty fine. Maybe what I'm going to do is add in another slider here and make this black. And now you can see we're at getting more darkness in that area, which is what I wanted. So you can play around with this now. And I think that looks pretty good. So we're done with our night sky. Let's render it out. I'll pause and come back when I'm done. All right, so the night sky is done rendering. So we can press F3 and save it. I'm just going to save it as night sky. And now we can go work on our igloo material. So let's head over to the first and second layer. And I'm going to just change our background color to some bluish color like that. I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually going to change our camera angle a bit too. Let's rotate it on the Z axis. And then move it by pressing G and then X twice. And I'm going to zoom out a bit, move it up like that maybe. And you can position it really wherever you want. I'm just trying to find a good angle that I think looks nice. So I think that's pretty good. So now we can start working on our material. So for the snow material, it's going to be really basic. We're not going to do anything too fancy. Let's just add in a mix shader and add in a glossy shader. And let's take a look at how that is. Doesn't look too bad. Let's decrease the amount of glossiness by setting the factor to 0 0.2 instead. Let's make sure this is a bright white color for both of these. And I think that's looking pretty good. 
what we can do is now is add a bump. So to do that, we're going to add in a noise texture. Press Ctrl T to bring up that uh, texture coordinate and the mapping node. Let's switch it to object again. Let's plug in a color ramp. Let's take a look. Let's increase that scale to about 100. Increase that contrast just like that. Let's move all of these back some more. And we'll add in a bump node. Plug this into the height instead. And let's plug this into the normal of both of our nodes and take a look. Okay, so that bump is obviously way too strong. So what we're going to do is decrease the strength right here to 0.1 maybe. Or maybe 0.2. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's try to get some more specs of shininess. So let's add a mix shader and let's add a emission shader and I know this won't be physically accurate but we're trying to create some nice art here so let's add a Veronai texture, press control T add this object uh, vector instead let's increase the scale up to like a thousand let's duplicate this color ramp here plug that in. Let's see how that looks. And we want to change this from intensity to cells also. And I'm just going to increase that black value all the way up to like about there. And then make the white value really close to it. Because this is going to be the mask affecting which area follows the other material and which part emits light. So now you can see that there's some areas that are really shiny. If you want, you can like make it a different color. You can make it like blue. I wouldn't recommend that. I would just recommend sticking to white and making it really bright. Like that. Okay. That scale is too big, so let's make it 5,000 now. Let's see, and I think that's a little too many scales. So let's let's set this black slider to 0.95 and this white slider to 0.96, and let's see how that looks. Doesn't look that bad. Looks like we had some nice reflective spots in the ground. So I think that's really good. And now let's copy this material to our igloo by selecting both igloos and then our plane and pressing Control L and then materials. So now they're sharing the same material. And if we look at our igloo here, that bump is way too strong. So let's select our igloo and just press this number here so it's a separate material. It won't affect the others. We're going to select this and make sure it's the same one. Now let's go to rendered view again. And in this bump section here, we're going to decrease that bump strength to 0 0.05. Let's press Ctrl B so we only focus on this igloo area. I think that glossiness is too strong. But instead, let's add in a Fresnel node and just plug that in. And I think that looks a lot better. It's much more smoother. We can possibly increase the strength now to 0 0.2. doesn't look that bad. Let's take a look at this part of the igloo. Okay, that's not looking too bad either. And 
they also have very faint white sections are white emitting sparkles so that's good and I think that's pretty much it for the snow material so now we can just tab into edit mode on our plane let's subdivide it really big set this one to 5 and let's give it a subsurf modifier set the level to 2 and set the shading to smooth now let's tab into edit mode and select some face way out here and we'll press O to enable proportional editing and just press G and Z to move it up and scroll with the middle mouse button so we get something like that okay that's looking pretty good let's maybe move one of the sections up here like that and possibly move this section down a bit and let's select one of these faces right in there and move it down as well so it looks like a deeper fall and let's go to rendered view I think that looks pretty nice so I still think I need to change the camera angle a bit and I think that's a little bit too strong so I'm gonna move that down like that I'm gonna select our camera and just rotate it by pressing R and then I'm gonna press X twice so I can move it up like this and then just move it down on the Z axis so I think this looks like a much better camera angle so that's it for our material and now let's create a new scene and this is going to be where we create our fake snow to create our fake snow we first need to create some icospheres with some different materials so let's add an icosphere here set the shading to smooth and press ctrl 2 to give it a subsurf modifier and we're going to give it a new material set to shadeless we're going to make it really white and we'll duplicate this one, give it a new material, make it a little darker. And we're just going to keep doing this so that we can change the color of these and have some random variation. Okay, let's make one that's really dark. And I think that's good. So let's select all of those, press Ctrl G, and we'll name it Snow. So now what we're going to do is create a particle system with these. So let's go to the second layer, add a plane, and also we need to add a camera for this scene. Press Ctrl Alt 0 to snap it to our view. I'm just going to press Alt G so it's in the center and then zoom out again. Now we can uh, scale up our plane. I'm going to scale it along the x-axis like that. And we'll give it a new particle system. We're going to set the end frame to 1. Let's leave the number at 1000. And we're going to select our group called Snow. We'll say pick random. Random size is going to be set to 1. And I'm going to decrease the size to 0 0.02. I think that's looking pretty good. So let's duplicate this plane. Give it a new particle system. Decrease the number to 500. We're going to increase the size to 0 0.05, I think. No, 0 0.07, maybe. I think that looks good. Let's duplicate one more. And this time we're going to set the number to 100. Whoops. We need to make it a new particle system. Now set the number to 100. And we can increase this size to 0.2, something really big. And we're going to set this background color to black. And let's render this out. And now I can save it as our fake snow. So let's head over to the compositor now. Check use nodes and backdrop. We're going to have to render out this scene really quickly, so I'm just going to render it and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, I forgot to mention that when you render this out, we want to render out the sky as transparent. So just come over here to the render settings, scroll down to the film tab and check transparent so that we don't have this bluish sky. And I'll render it again.
Alright, so it's done rendering. So now we can press Control up arrow to make this full screen. And I'm just going to move this back. Move that back. Press Control Shift and left click to bring up our viewer node. And right now it's really grainy and that's because the samples are low. And I think we need to decrease the amount of emission on this snow as well. So let's add in a alpha over node. And we're going to add in our image. This is going to be our night sky image. Let's just plug that in. Plug in our alpha into the factor. Let's flip these two so it actually looks right. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now what we want to do is add in our fake snow. So let's add that in. And we want to blur this out. So press filter, blur, fast Gaussian, relative, 5 by 5, or no, 2 by 2. Set it to Y. And then let's duplicate it. And this one will make 1 by 1. And let's mix these two together. Set it to add. I think that's too bright. So let's set it to mix instead. And set the factor to 0.5. And now we can press Shift A, color mix. And we can overlay this onto our other image. So let's flip those. Now you can set this factor to whatever you want so you can get as much snow or as little snow as you want. So I think I'll set it to about 0.75 maybe. Or maybe 1. Yep, I think I'll just leave it at 1. And now I'm going to add in a color balance. And I'm just going to play around with this boost the blues in our scene like that then add in a RGB curve we're gonna decrease the brightness of our scene a lot so it's like that we're gonna boost the red slightly let's decrease the green or increase it slightly and then increase this blue to about there and now we're getting a really nice blue scene, which I like. And we can add in our vignette right now. So let's go to Ellipse Mask. Let's play around with that width. Let's increase it to about there and there. Let's duplicate one of these blur nodes and set it to 20 by 20. And let's also duplicate this mix node here set it to a factor of 1 and set it to multiply just so it makes this area a little bit more white and the edges a little bit darker we'll duplicate one more time and set it to add but we're gonna set this factor to 0.5 so it's not as bright let's duplicate this multiply node and just plug this in and see how it looks alright so it doesn't look that bad but I think I'm going to get rid of this multiply node here. So just delete that. See how that looks instead. I think that looks much better. I think I'm going to play around with this and shrink that size a bit. And might have to shrink it some more. I think that's better. Nope, that's way too little. Let's actually set this blur to 10 by 10 instead. And now if we take a look, we can see what it's doing. I'm going to get rid of this add node. Because otherwise the edge is a little too sharp. And so let's just play around with that. I think that's pretty good. Might need to increase that width some more. Let's look at that. Uh, it's not looking bad. I'm just going to increase it more. So it's like that. Let's take a look. And I think that looks really nice. 
So we have to fix up this material a little bit. So let's go back to our other scene. And let's select our snow material here. Let's press Control B so we only focus on this section. Okay. And I'm going to decrease this strength to about 2. And I think that should fix it. Let's do the same thing for the igloo. Decrease that strength to 2. And let's see if we render it out if it looks any better. Alright, so it's done rendering and I think it looks much better. But as you can see here, it looks like this igloo's floating a bit. So to fix that, we're just going to select our plane here. And I'm going to just select one of these faces near it and move it up with proportional edit like that. And I'm just going to have to move this section down a bit like that. Okay, so I think that should look fine. Let's maybe move this section up slightly more. Okay, and I want to add some depth of field, so we're going to add in a empty. And I'm going to position that right inside the front of this igloo here. And just move that up into the center. I think that's a good position. And let's go to our camera settings here. The focus, let's select our empty. Let's increase this radius to 0.1 see how that looks I think that's a little too much so let's change it to 0 0.02 okay I think that looks pretty good for this scene so I'm just going to come down here to the samples set the samples to 500 and I'll render it out and come back when it's done alright so it's done rendering out and it looks pretty nice there's much less noise now the light isn't as strong here so it doesn't look weird and we also fixed that edge right there so let's head back to the compositor by pressing control and left arrow and you can see that it looks really nice right now it might be a little bit too dark so if you don't like that you can just brighten it up here with this contrast line okay I still think that looks pretty good I don't like this black edge that much, so what I'm going to do is add or duplicate this multiply node. I'm going to plug this into the factor and set it to mix instead. And if we view this, we want the center to be white. We'll make this top one like a grayish color. And if we view that, you can see it's not pure black in this corner anymore. And depending on how bright you make this, it'll be that much brighter in this image. So I'm going to leave this somewhere about here I believe. I think that looks good. And one last thing I want to do, I want to really blow up this light in this section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this section back. Let's deselect that. Let's move this section all the way back here. I'm going to duplicate this ellipse mask and this blur node. Let's just view this ellipse, or just view this part first. Right click on this ellipse mask, and this white rectangle that you see is what our ellipse mask, the size of our ellipse mask. So I'm just going to scale this down to like that. And I want to position it right in this area where the light is. So let's just move it around until you get it right where you want it scale that down possibly make it a little bit bigger let's move that scale it I think that's about good so let's blur this out that looks pretty good let's duplicate it and blur it 5 by 5 this time and let's mix these two switch it to add I think that looks good and let's duplicate it set it to multiply let's view this scene again and I'm gonna take this image check the eyedropper and just pick that yellowish color in there 
duplicate this multiply node and set it to add now. And if we view it, you should be able to see that you're getting a nice blown out uh, fire light area in this section of the igloo. And if you want, you can still play around with that position. So let's view that. And just position it where you want it. Maybe make it a little bit wider. Okay. Whoops, that's too much. I think right about there is pretty good. And now with this factor value, you can play with how strong you actually want that light to be. So I'm just going to set that to about 0.75 or 0.5 and I don't like that color that much I want it to be a little bit darker so let's pick maybe that color or somewhere closer to red nope let's see I think that color is good so that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys Let's just move this composite node back now and plug this into the composite node and just control shift and left click on it one more time and there you have it guys that's how you finish this igloo scene in blender so thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new if you have any suggestions feel free to leave them in the comments below thanks for watching bye